All right. I know that he was going to read that. You can go ahead and flip it. We'll get it in the sermon if you like. I see it up there now. There we go. The mind of Jesus. You know, when this, we celebrate this weekend, and it doesn't hurt to celebrate his resurrection, amen? I may not agree with everything that goes on <laughs> during the time of Easter, but I sure agree with that. My Savior lives, amen? My Savior's tomb is empty. So I'm thankful for that. What a blessing, what a blessing it is to know that. And he saved us not just to wipe away our sins. He needed to do that too. But he saved us to restore us to a, to a point in our lives that we finally can see him face to face and absolutely be perfect in his sight. Amen? And I love that about my Christian experience. He, he didn't leave me where I was. He helps me to keep going and and. And, and I'm slow, so I don't know if there's any other slow people out there. God's still working on me. Just leave me alone until he gets here. It'll be all right. But I want you to know that God's good. But he's here to give us better than what we have. He's to give us his mind, his thinking, which changes everything else about us. Father in heaven, we are just thankful for this time of worship. Now it's where you teach us. Please, I pray, teach us. And Father, may the one who speak not speak at all or be able to unless they're your words. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it. Amen. Philippians 2, 5 to 8 says this. Let this mind be in you. Be in where? In, in where? Now you've got to understand, this is an amazing scripture. It's bigger than what you think. He says, let this mind be in you which was also in... Wow. So whatever Jesus was thinking, however he thought, whatever he thought about people, however he judged people, that should be our judgment. Amen? I mean, if he looked at them and said, bless your heart, uh, your sins are forgiven, we should look at people and say what? Bless your heart, your what? Sins are forgiven. God's there to, to die for you and to live for you and to give you something better. But he says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, he was God, amen? But being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be what? Equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. If you, if you, and this is, we need to unpack this just a little, and then we'll move on. But have you ever thought what that just said? He, he never had a problem with being equal with God. Got that? Because he was and is God, okay? But then he says, because I love you so much. Because I love you so much. I want to come and be a whole lot less. <laughs> Amen? Flesh, like you and me, and in cold weather, and in warm weather, and in thirst, and, and hunger, and, and all those things that we go through. I, I, he didn't live long enough to have a whole lot of pains. But if he'd lived old as, as Art and I, well, he would, he would have been able to have some pains in, in his joints when he, when he walked. But God loved us and said it didn't bother him. Uh, it wasn't robbery to him. Listen to what this says. Uh, it wasn't robbery to be equal with God. He himself was no reputation taking the form of a what? Bond servant and coming in the what? The likeness of man. He came to be one just like us so that we would trust him. There was a story told and you may have heard it before. But there's a story of a man who decided not to go to the Christmas night special at the church. He decided to stay home. And it was a terrible storm anyway. He really didn't want to travel all the way to the church and get back because he kind of lived out in the country. So he stayed home. And this horrible snow was coming in. The wind was blustery and everything else. And suddenly he kept hearing thumps like thump, 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 thump. Thump. And he said, what's going on? It sounded like it was hitting the windows. He thought, what's falling from the sky? <laughs> he went out and he looked and there were birds. 
They were flying into the window where, it was, where the lights were, trying to get to a warm place. They were hitting his window. Boom, 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 boom. He says, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And he, he questioned, you know, uh, how to do that. So he, he put on his clothes and got all, you know, all he could get on. And he tried to, he says, I'll, I'll open the barn door and I'll open the lights in the barn door and I'll see if I can't get them into the barn where they'll be warm, right? He was worried about that. There was this whole big flock of birds there. And so he went outside and he got all together in his, in his in, in, trying to get them together in, in one place. And every time he'd get them shoe in one way, after he'd opened the barn door, they would go a different way. And he'd try to get this in and they'd go a different way and in another way. And he, he said, Lord, how am I going to get them to where they'll be saved? He said, if I could just be one like them, I could talk to them and tell them to go in the barn. <laughs> and Jesus came to be one like us. So that he could talk to us we wouldn't be afraid and we'd be able to lead us to the place we need to be so we can be safe amen he said it was it was nothing for him he he took it gladly upon himself to be a bond servant and to come in the likeness of men there we go. okay I'm not clicking again Should I be clicking yet? Okay, it's on. You want to click it for me? And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient. How obedient? In this plan of salvation, this plan given down since the foundation of the world, when he and the Father counseled together and said, this is what's going to happen if anything goes awry. How obedient was he to that plan? To the point of what? And not just a death, but even to what? Death of the cross. That tells me how wonderful a Savior we have. Amen? Okay, I'm still not going. And then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter and James and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply what? Deeply distressed. I think you're just going to have to click it for me because whatever's happening is not happening. Okay. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly what? Sorrowful. Even to what? Dad, stay here and, and, and watch. And he went a little further and he fell on his ground and he prayed as if it were, uh, and said if it were possible that the hour might pass, pass for him. And then he said to him, he said, Father Abba, and this Abba Father is a really, a really tender. It's like saying Daddy. More than Father, he gave it even more even more closeness. You ever had your kids and they finally call up and they say, Daddy. Yeah? You get their attention. You know, they get your attention, don't they, when they say that. He says that, like that. He says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. He says, I know it's possible. I know that we talked and had counsel together about how this was going to come, come through. He says, take this cup from me, nevertheless, obedience. Not what I will, but what? But what? But what you will. Whose names, ah, uh, listen to this, have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from when? When was this planned, folks? Foundation of the world. Were, was God surprised by it? No. He said, I've been planning this since before I made you that you might have eternal life if anything goes wrong. Wow. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Ellen White says this in this beautiful uh, quote here. It says, God became one with man when in the council between the Father and the Son in heaven, it was determined that if man fell uh, from his allegiance, the Son of God should be his Redeemer and restore in him the what? The moral image of what? Wow. 
What's your rest of your restoration supposed to look like when he's through with you? Just like God. In fact, in 1 John it says, when we see him again, when he comes, we'll be just like him. Wow. How far are you in that? I mean, I know how far I am. Oh my goodness. Of course, being from Texas, I got a little up on you guys, you know. We're a little more special than y'all are. I, I hope you don't think that. I'm just saying I'm not trying to, but that's the way it is, but no. No, no. But I want you to know that he said, I don't want to just save you. I want to show the devil, your enemy, that you can be restored completely to what I made you in the first place, which was, he says, we'll make them in the image of God. Amen? He said, I'm going to restore you. So the people, when Jesus shows up, right, what are they going to look like? He says, we'll be just like him when he comes back. Wow. That's something to pray about, isn't it? So when Jesus shows up, we should already be like him. Mm. So he didn't come and then die and then, and then, and then be resurrected as we, as we celebrate this weekend just to save us. He says, I've come to make you better. Your life will be better. Your family will be better. Your, 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 your contentment at work will be better. <laughs> Some of us say, oh, I, don't, I don't know if that'll ever work. But, but you know, we are a special people saved by God to be remade in the very image of God. That's why we should, we should celebrate that. Not celebrate how far we are from it, but how wonderful God is working with us. I always say, God said, you are the most patient, 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 patient thing. I love you so. Because your patience is amazing. I mean, if it had been me, I would have already did the thing. You know, thump Harvey, you're out of here. Because you know. I'm not even patient with myself, you know. And so I, I sit there and look and say, God, thank you for being patient, but I won't stop reaching for you. Please don't stop reaching for me. Because I want to be remade in that very image of God prior to his coming. People are waiting for him to come, so they'll just hit him with, they'll, he'll hit them with a magic you know, wand and twang, we're all perfect. That's not it. In fact, he says, when they come, right, his rewards will already be with him. That image of God is important for us to strive for. Not on our own. There's not a thing you can do except pray and center yourself where? In Christ. And allow him to come into your mind and change it. So let this mind be in you which was in Christ. Amen? Okay, how is this to be done? Good question. Word says this. The word was made and what? Full of what? And if he did it, he said, I'll make it in you. Amen? Amen? Whose job is it to change you? God's. But whose job is it to find him every day? Yours. Yours. We'll talk about that just a little bit later. Even For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a what? He says, man, I, I, I'm a servant. I'm going to show you some of the things that that mind of Christ is like. What's one of the first things it's like? To be a what? A servant. Well, we, we, we kind of like being served. Amen? I'm telling you. Maybe, not, maybe you don't like being served. I don't know. But I kind of like that. I can get stuck in that mode, you know. Wife brings the slippers and all that. No. <laughs> not on this life. <laughs> Anyway, where was I? <laughs> She's from Oklahoma now. She, she, we, 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 she, she'll tell you where the, where the, how the cow eat the cabbage. You know, that's just the way it is. This is when we, he says, oh boy, where do we go from here? Go back one. There. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to what? Serve and give his life for a ransom for many. So he says, if I am a servant and my mind is a servant mind, what should you be doing? Serving. That's what we'll talk about in our next scripture here. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, 
When did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? Or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Listen to this, servants. For assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Now we have a belief. I'm going to give you a little bit of a time to, of teaching here. I have some really good friends who feed the homeless. And they do a wonderful job doing it. Amen? It's good. Got that. But he had this problem that he thought the, the pork weenies were cheaper, right? <laughs> and so he would buy the pork weenies to do our ministry. And I kept saying, well, we don't really believe in eating pork, but we think it's an abomination and it's not good. And God said no and all those things. How okay, how are you believe? Well, he says, they're just, they're, they don't know that. They're just ready to eat. And I said, what, is that, what does that scripture say? As you have done to Christ, them, you have done to me. So you just fed Christ pork. He says, well, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> but you see how we need to, everything should reflect our relationship with Jesus on how we treat who? So we should be a servant to those people. He says, you, if, in fact, he says, if, if your, your, your very salvation will depend upon it. Because he said, those who didn't serve others and didn't didn't love others enough to serve them, what did they do? They were cast away. He said, well, this is works. Harvey. No, 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 no. As Jesus comes into where? Your mind, he starts what? Changing you, and your thoughts become what? His thoughts. Let this mind be in you, which was what? Which was in Christ Jesus. So you said, I want to be able to think like Jesus, and therefore I will serve other people like Jesus, because Jesus had a servant's mind and that's what we need to understand this we should have is also a servant's mind then uh, john 15 10 says if you keep my commandment you will abide where just as i have what and what there's something about obedience that's a part of jesus mind even to the point of death and not just any death but even to the point of the death on the cross that he says is the mind of christ therefore should that be our mind Are we willing to die for him you see that's where it kind of comes down to now none of us have been tested maybe in that yet i haven't seen a fiery furnace yet or a lion's den but things will be coming later very soon okay when we'll be tested is whether we really love our Savior and our Lord. Will we truly abide in His love by obeying what He's asked us to do? Yeah. That's the mind of Christ. He was obedient even to the point of what? Death. And even to the point of the death on the cross. That's what that whole statement is bigger than we've read through that statement and passed through that statement and we don't even understand it sometimes. That's unpacking it and saying, you know what, if I have the mind of Jesus, I should be willing to obey him in all that he's asked me to do. Now, I'm not saying we're there yet. I'm saying that's our goal, amen? And when we pray, we say, Lord, I want to be obedient. I struggle with being obedient, but I want to be obedient, and I want you to take my mind and change my mind and help me to love you enough to do what you've asked me to do. Okay. And being found in appearance, I want to reread uh, verse 8, and he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Obedient. So we must have a, a, a servant's mind, but we must have a what? Obedient mind also, to have the mind of Christ. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they... Can you imagine what that prayer was like? As they nailed him to the cross? As they lifted him up? Wow. 
would we have been so easy to forgive? You see, when you have the mind of Christ, you should have a forgiving heart. Because I'll tell you, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Now listen to what some of the scripture that we'll be looking at here. Luke 11, 25 and 26. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, what? And what? Forgive him that your Father may also, what? Forgive you. If you want the Father to forgive you and your prayer request to be forgiven, then you must, what? Forgive. And some of us have been through things. I was just with some people I was counseling this last week. It's been, it's been a tough road. One of the people in their families had abused the girls years ago. And the girls are just still dealing with it. And finally I said, we need to talk. You know, let's talk this through so we can get this splinter that's inside your heart out, right? And that's the key. Do you think you'll ever find a place where you can forgive? One said yes, one said no. I said, you need to find that place regardless of what's been done to you. Amen? And that's not easy. So it's the same as us saying we, we need to be obedient. That's not easy. Amen? But what am I going to pray for? Father, I, I don't know, this man abused me, and I, I have trouble forgiving him. In fact, I can't forgive him. It hurts too much. But Father, teach me to forgive. Teach me to forgive. Please. There's a book we studied here when I was here. It was called Deliverance, the book of deliverance. Holy Spirit and the book of deliverance. Deliverance teaches you how to finally forgive and get past it and get delivered from it. Amen? That's the whole idea. But a, a Christ mind is a mind of forgiveness. He says, Father, forgive, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, le read this. Do you believe God's word is real? But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. Is it detrimental to your salvation to forgive? Whoa. Is it ever? And we all may have those things back in our minds that happen to us in certain places, in certain times, in different things. We said, I just can't forgive for that. They've never asked. They don't have to ask. You can forgive them first. Father, I forgive whoever it was in my life. Please forgive me. And if, you're, if you don't feel like you've, you've accomplished that, it's like with obedience, say, Father, teach me, please, to forgive those in my life that have done me wrong. Amen? Then... He works upon your what? Mind so that you have the mind which is what? The mind of Christ. Who forgave even those who, who, uh, who put him on the cross. And forgive us our debts as we what? That's a pretty strong, I mean we got a lot of evidence here that, that forgiveness is an important part of, of our Christian experience. We must learn to forgive that boss <laughs> That, that person in our lives, whoever it was that dealt us such harsh things, we need to say, you know what? I will not let that person keep me out of heaven. Amen? I need to forgive that person. God, give me a forgiving heart and help me to learn uh, from you. So if we have the mind of Christ, we should also have a what? A forgiving mind. Next we have Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are what? Whatever things are, 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 good report. If there's any what? Virtue. If there's anything what? What should you do? 
on what? On these things. These things which you've learned and received and saw in me, these things do, and the God of peace will be with you. He says, it's important what you put into your brain. Got it? And we all struggle with stuff we put into our brains. I can remember. The best thing that ever happened to me was when I confessed in a, in a sermon that I love to watch NCIS. Jethro and Abby and all those people. I love them. Doc, I mean, and Ducky, and I mean, you name all the ones that's on there. Tony, and used to be. I think some of them are gone now. I'm not even sure. But who cares? But I used to love to watch that show. What did I put into my brain? Death, shooting, horrible things. Should we be watching what we put into our brain according to Scripture? Are we all guilty of putting bad things into our brain? Yes. So what should our prayer be? God, help me to change. I want, to, I want to watch good things. I want to watch things that are pure. I'm going to go back one, 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 one deal on that. On, on there. I, want to watch, I, want, I want things that are true and, and noble and things that are just and whatever things are pure, things, whatever things are good, whatever things are lovely. He says, put these things in your brain if you have the brain in the mind of what? Christ. And some of us may even be caught up in some things we shouldn't be looking at at all. That be so. You need to say, Jesus, I need to get over these things. And there's a reason why. Junk in. What? I love my sweet wife. I have permission to give this testimony. She struggles with computers. And she has her troubles. Oh, boy, does she have trouble with computers. She'll say, just take my computer and make it work right. <laughs> I said, did you do this? Or did you do that? No, I didn't do that. I said, well, you probably did. That's why. No, I didn't do that. But, I mean, did you, I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. Okay. And finally, I'll show her something. Yeah, I guess I did that. <laughs> and it's, it's terrible. You ever had those trouble with computers, you know, that, that kind of thing? And she'll give it to me, and she'll say, how come it works when you get it? I said, because I don't do that. <laughs> if you don't do that, it doesn't do what it did. <laughs> Junk what? In what? Junk out. You, you have to learn that your brain is a place that remembers every single thing you put in it. Everything. Files it away in little file drawers. They can go through there every so often and try to pick those things out. Amen? And you're giving him footholds in your life if you're allowing those things to come into your life. And he has a place. He says, I can move in. You say, no, no, no. Jesus, I struggle. I struggle with this show or this thing or this computer thing or phone thing. Or, you know, I have to ask some people sometime and and, and sometimes I struggle with this myself, not as often as I used to, though. But what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Some say turn on the news. Some say they, they pick up their phone. What should be the first thing you do? Pray. Lord, before I even put one thing in my brain, <laughs> help me. Help me. Be, I want to do this right. I want to have the mind of... Christ. If I put junk in, it'll be junk out, and I don't want that. I had one guy, you know, I, I, I put a lot of junk in my mind before I became a Christian. I'm going to tell you straight up. I had my addictions. Most of you know all my, all my, my testimony. And I went through a whole thing of addictions and, and recovery and all that. But they're all still where? But you know what God does with those things? I think now, this, is my, this is my own opinion, so this is my baptized imagination. You can use anything you want. But I think he starts erasing some of those files. Amen. <sighs> Don't think about that anymore. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Victory. Amen. Victory. Amen. 
That's what I want. I want the mind of Jesus so that Jesus says, I'll give you victory. <laughs> I'm tired of the devil winning. How about you? I want to, I want to do the right thing. Junk in, what? Junk out. So we should have a what kind of mind? We should train our minds. We should be putting good stuff into our brains. If you want to, Christ had a trained mind. He read early in his life. He, he knew scripture. And so when the devil came to tempt him, what did he say? As is written, trained what? Mind. The mind of Christ is a trained mind. Should we have a trained mind? You, you, guess what? You have one. Either a badly trained or a goodly. Goodly? I remember I'm from Texas. We can make words out of anything. But you can have a good mind or a bad mind. Is that correct? You can have good training and bad training. Is that correct? And let me tell you what. You're getting one or the other all the time. You don't have an in-between. See, that's why we watch some things, and sometimes I'm guilty of saying, well, this isn't too bad. How many ever said, well, there's only a couple of cuss words in that one? That wasn't too bad. Really? Do you need those cuss words in your mind? Because if you don't watch out, they'll come out from your mouth. And you go, where'd that come from? You put it in there. Junk in what? Junk out. You need a trained mind. If you have the mind of Christ, you have a trained mind. How do we attain this mind? This is what's important. Hope I'll help you now. I hate to make you feel bad and then turn around and leave you that way, so I want to know how. There's victory, all right? The Bible says this, Behold, I stand where? The door of your mind. We always say it stands at the door of our heart, but does our heart really do anything other than pump blood? No. It's where we make our decisions for Christ and our decisions to do wrong things and watch wrong things or to do good things and watch good things is made where? That's right. So, so I stand at the door of your mind and what? Knock. And if anyone what? Here's my voice. Here's your job right here, folks. Opens what? Opens what? What's your job every morning when you wake up? There you go. Got it? You're on the path to victory when you do that. Because he says, I might come in. Oh, it's a promise. Because I'm going to come in and dine with him and he with me. He does more than that. Let me see. I'll show you here. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the... What does he do when he comes into your mind when you open the door? He starts renewing the brain. Praise the Lord. Amen? Oh, I love that part. I can remember when I was just a baby, baby Christian, and I, I tasted some stuff, you know? And I said, oh, man, wrong word, wrong word. That's good. At potluck. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that's still there. I need to have a better mind. Amen? Put it in, it's going to what? Come out, it will. Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may what? That means to show that God may use you as an example. Wow. Whoo! He says, aren't you crowded with so great a cloud of what? Of witnesses? Right, God says? Why? They're watching you. You'd be surprised at your center of influence. You might think there's no one watching. You're wrong. There's people watching you. Says, and that you may prove or show what is that what? Good and what? Acceptable and what? What kind of mind should you have then? Perfect. And until then, what should you be doing? Brain, boy, you get that, that brain getting trained, amen? And changed and, and start giving up those things that aren't good for us and giving up those things that aren't good for us even to eat. You know, some of the things that we're not, we shouldn't be eating clog up this what? This brain. So I'm saying that you can eat good things too for a good reason, not just because it's healthy for you. There's nothing used to aggravate me more than say, well, Harvey, you shouldn't eat that. It's not healthy for you. I said, but it sure is good. But is it good for me? You see what I'm saying? 
We should eat healthier. That makes our brain healthier. Did you know that? It all makes us cleaning it up. We should look and, 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 and what we watch, right? Because our brain is starting to get what? Cleaned up. Amen? These are things that we should do because we want the mind, which is the mind of who? The mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. What kind of mind? What else? Forgiving and trained. Folks, let this mind be in you. Don't miss on any of them. Because these are the things that are in the mind of Christ. Is there another slide? I didn't think so. I want to make sure. Well, I've shown you some things I believe that the resurrected Christ gave us as gifts. Okay? His example is that he wants to save you for eternity. His example is that he's willing to train you to be ready when he comes back. Because he says he is the author and the finisher. I'm confident of this very thing that he who begins a good work in you will finish it. Do you believe that? I do. So what should I do every morning? Pray. Open my, my mind and say what? Come in. You're invited. And then God, get out your 409 and whatever else you need. Start cleaning me up. That's what I want to be. I want to be like you when you show up. I want to be thinking like you. I want to be acting like you. And I want everything to be what it should be. Not so that I can brag about me. But so that you can look at me and say, Come, thou good and faithful steward. Amen? As much as I've done wrong in my life, I can't wait to hear those words. Come. Now, good and faithful still. Father in heaven, I love you so. We do. We thank you for your great love for us. Father, please, I ask, forgive us our sins and cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds. And Father, the things that we're not doing right, it, it's, we struggle at it. Forgive us for even struggling, but we, we're weak. But where we're weak, you bring your strength. It's a promise. We count your word. So, Father, be with us and change us. We have things in our lives that we've allowed in that have given Satan a foothold. Forgive us, but, Father, help us to get it out. Start erasing files that don't need to be in there anymore. Please, with your heads bowed, please don't look up. With your eyes closed, I'm just going to ask you a quick question. I'm not going to ask you to come up front. But I'm just going to ask you if you're struggling with something in your life, whatever it may be. I just want to give a special prayer for you this morning. I won't say your name, of course. But if that's a need, all you have to do is raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Amen. Yes, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen, yes. Anyone else? Anyone else this morning? Oh, Father in heaven, thank you. You've seen the uplifted hands and the things that, that people are needing here help with. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, the power of Christ, our risen Savior and our Lord. I pray you take care of these things and we can't wait to give you praise and honor as we tell others of your great power to change our hearts and our minds so that we can follow you. And Father, when you show up, may we not only be like you, but may we be thinking completely like you also. For our mind may then be 
the very mind of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.